Aloha, everyone. Welcome to another episode of In the Green and Being I. How are you doing today, Paul? I'm doing great. Felicia, how are you doing? I am doing well. So I understand you already really know our guest today pretty well. I have been educated and I've had a pleasure to have had a, uh, a relationship with Mark for a number of years now. Um, and he's actually helped more than one of my businesses. So yeah, I'm excited to share with all of the, the watchers and the listeners about uh, Mr. Fortune Marketing. Awesome. Well, welcome to the show, Mark. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Paul knows some things about you. So let's share a little bit about some things about you to others. Sure. So uh, I've been in the sales and, and marketing. That's been my area of my career for my entire career, which is over 20 years. But I started my business, went out on my own as a marketing consultant for small businesses um, six and a half years ago. I joined BNI right off the bat. Matter of fact, I got referred into BNI pretty much as soon as I opened my business. Um, so it's always been a big part of, of, of what I've done. Um, growing up, I grew up in Fort Smith, Arkansas, um, born and raised there, went to college in Washington, DC and worked there for a little bit afterwards. Uh, I worked for an independent record label in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, back when there were things called independent record labels. It's a little bit before iTunes and the internet ization of music um, and I've been in Little Rock gosh now for over 20 years um, as you can see in the photo I have a little bit of a Jimmy Buffett problem um, my family has to put up with that I'm a, I'm a parrot head I've been to I say over 30 concerts my wife says it's over 50 I don't know um, but that's the four of us that's my wife and my two kids in Las Vegas a couple of years ago getting ready to go to a Buffett concert that I probably enjoyed a, a whole lot more than they did but they put up with me so that's nice um, and as I mentioned, I, I mean, I joined BNI right off the bat when I opened my business um, and frankly had, had enough business that I took a, a, a break from BNI for about a year, but I've, I've rejoined a little over a year and a half ago, probably. And it's, it's been great. Matter of fact, if I remember correctly, Paul, I think you're the one who referred me in to the chapter that I'm in now. So it's, it's been a great relationship. I think I put the screws on you for at least that entire <laughs> year that you were out. Yeah, I think I subbed for you a couple times, and next thing I know, I was in the chapter, and I think, and I'm president next year, so, you know. That's how it works. We get you in. <laughs> well, Mark, with your background and with the time you've been in and around b and I'm sure you're very familiar that there are really seven core values that we cherish very closely in b and I. So, would you share, what's your favorite or what's the one that really just means the most to you? Yeah, this is a this is an interesting question because I mean we if you're really involved in BNI, you're participating in all seven of these at any one time. That just but I think right off the bat, building relationships is probably the biggest one for me. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what BNI is about for me and for my business is getting to know you know the other 25 people in my chapter and then getting to know people in other chapters and then we all just sort of build referral networks out from there. So. You know, and believe it or not, I'm actually kind of an introverted person naturally. So, you know, sort of being forced to get out of your shell and, and do the networking work it takes to make BNI work and build those relationships is, is really the one that's been most beneficial to me over the, you know, five plus years I've been in a BNI chapter. Hmm. Thanks Wait, for sharing that. Yeah, like a Jimmy Buffett fan that's wearing those bright standout <laughs> shirts as an introvert. Hmm. Well, I mean... It's not 100% of the time I'm introverted, right? You got to come out of your shell every once in a while. Mark's what they call an introverted extrovert. Isn't that the <laughs> new buzzword? That's probably right. Yeah. It, when left up to my own devices, I'm in, I'm in the corner reading a book. But, you know, you can't be in my business and, and not get out there and meet people. Well, man, we've got a couple things that are on the screen. I'm a proud owner of one of these as well. <laughs> And it's got more notes in it than you would ever want to see. But tell us a little bit about uh, just your background and your experience and how does that tie to b and as well? Sure. So when I, um, most of my career prior to launching my business was with big, big corporations in marketing and sales roles. When I decided to go out on my own, I decided to serve, you know, purely small businesses. I mean, 100% of my clients 
our small businesses typically don't have big marketing departments. And one of the ways right off the bat that I started getting the word out and building relationships and educating folks about what we do was I've, I've had the opportunity to co-author two different books and I'm glad to see Paul had his copy there. Um, you know, both on um, small business marketing issues, the first one was specifically on local lead generation. Um, so all the things small business owners need to think about to generate more leads for their business and putting in a system. The second one, which came out a little over a year ago, was um, on content marketing specifically for local search. So what helps your business show up in Google, you know, maps results, search results, those sorts of things. We were fortunate enough, my co-authors and I, we, I think we were all BNI members. Um, we were able to get in touch with Dr. Meisner and he blurred for us on the book, you know, got a copy of the book and read it and wrote a nice quote for us to include on the book jacket and all that stuff. So it's been, it's been a big help and it really helps in BNI because you know, for one, it's very easy for me to educate other members in my chapter about what I do so that they can generate referrals for me by handing them books, right? We talk about, you know, if you're not sure what content marketing is or what local search is, well, here's a book on the subject, right? And I, you know, give away and, and, and use books as a, as a wonderful lead in, in in my marketing efforts all the time. Oh, well, uh, hmm. I guess I'm going to have one on my, on my shelf. Too, right? <laughs> I just need an address, Felicia. <laughs> or when we meet in check person, you'll mail. have them in hand. Yeah. The check <laughs> Matter of fact, mail. now that I think about it, there's a chapter on the local lead one purely about BNI and doing, and doing local networking as a way to generate leads for your business. Like I said, we're all my co-authors and I are all BNI members. So. Oh, wow. That's a, talking about building relationships and really connecting like, that must have been a, a project for sure. And so just in confirming, as we see on the screen, uh, we people can purchase that on, on Amazon? Yeah, if you just, uh, you can look up either title or just look up Mark Z Fortune on Amazon. And I've got an author page and the books are there. And it'd be great if you bought 50 copies. No, I'm just kidding. But they're, <laughs> yeah, they, they are on Amazon. They're on Kindle version, ebook format and, and uh, hard copy. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. So b and go out there and, and support and get that information that um, Mark and, and your fellow b &I members have put out there. So small business, like I said, you seem to really have a, a big emphasis on that. So tell us a little bit about this infographic talking about a marketing system to do that. Sure. So my whole philosophy on making small business marketing work is that it needs to be systematized and it needs to be a, a part of your business the same way customer service is or finance and accounting. What happens too often with small business owners is that marketing is like that one thing they forget about or they kind of it's 11th on the to do list of 10 things they've got to get done. And, you know, it's the sort of thing that nine o'clock on Sunday night, they're like, oh, man, we needed to update our website or oh, man, we meant to do more on Facebook or send an email this week or whatever it is. My philosophy is that you really need to build it as a system in your company. And it starts with strategy. So the center of the graphic there, who you're talking to, what your unique difference is and what your core message is, not just, you know, great quality and great service because everybody says that. Um, and then from there, all the tactics follow from that strategy. And it starts with your website, especially in digital marketing. Um, you know, just a Facebook page is not enough for your business. Um, generally speaking, just a starter GoDaddy website is not enough for your business because it, it's so hard to get people's attention these days because we're bombarded with so much information. So if you've done the strategy work right and you really know who you're trying to talk to and what your unique difference is, you know, making that story come to life on your website um, and then through all the other tactics there is really how you can stand out and begin to generate results for your business. You know, for most local small businesses, it's about getting seen in Google Maps results, um, having great reviews because we all notice how many stars you've got, what other people have said about you when they look at your reviews, making social media work for your business. It's not just, you know, throwing up a, a smiling, you know, baby picture that says happy Thanksgiving 2017 and leaving it there, right? It, you got to put a little more effort into it. But when we work with small businesses, we implement this system for them. And it's all about, you know, making, as, as we say, making the phones ring and making the door swing. So it's just, it's about lead generation and helping a business grow predictably over time and adjusting tactics as the market warrants and, and, and as your business grows. Say that again, making the doors 
the phone making the phones through. ring and making the doors swing. That's when everybody was allowed to make doors swing. So uh, now maybe making the website sing, maybe something like that. But uh, what a you know, it's all at the end of the day. If things look great and you're not getting any phone calls, things need to adjust, right? So it's it's still especially for small businesses. It's about how many leads are you getting and how many of those leads are converting to customers and how affordably are you doing that, right? It's not just keep throwing money at it forever. It has to it has to pay off. There has to be an ROI there. Yes. Well, no wonder you're in Paul and friends. Paul is really good at doing little cute taglines like that as well. So. He probably came up with that one. I don't remember, but I'll take credit for it. So Mark, if I'm a small business owner and I'm looking at a page like that, that looks like a lot of things to try and manage, a lot right. of things to have to think about. So kind of walk me through, you know, if I was going to try and do these things on my own, how doable is that versus just partnering with somebody who's going to help me implement and strategically execute on some of these things? Sure. Yeah. And I mean, that's, you know, that's where somebody like my company comes involved because this is what we do, right? We implement this system for our clients when we work with them it, because this is overwhelming. I, and I've done, and I still do coaching where I'll take a small business owner and coach them on how to do all of this. But so many times, you know, you're still left with the question, well, who's going to get the work done, right? I mean, you know, me as a small business owner, you know, Paul Kroger is a small business owner is probably not building a website or worrying about search engine optimization or knows how to, you know, change title tags and metadata and things on web pages or is generating customer reviews all the time. We usually perform that as a, as a digital marketing agency on behalf of our clients. Um, and it's step by step, right? This, that's why it's a system. It's not, we do all eight things all at once. It's we start where the, where the client is, understand what their biggest challenges are. If they're generating enough leads, but maybe they have some bad Google reviews and we've got to deal with a reputation management issue, or maybe they've been throwing money at Google ads, but they're not getting any ROI on it. So maybe we'll start a little more with their ad program, but we really, you know, diagnose what's going on in the business and then implement this system where it's going to address their pains the quickest. Mm. Awesome. Well, that's definitely uh, a bonus. Cause like I said, there's some individuals or companies that, you know, yeah, they want to learn it, but there's others that just rather leave that to the experts and just know that I'm getting quality service <laughs> to, to do that. So right. that's awesome that you're providing that, that service. So what are some things that people can do today? Yeah. So it, you know, most of the time when I start talking with a small business owner, you know, um, through a BNI referral or however they come to me, there's usually pretty, a pretty standard set of challenges or problems that they're trying to solve, right? It, 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 especially in digital marketing, it's I'm not being found on Google or I'm spending money with somebody and I don't know what I'm getting in return or, you know, man, I have a hard time with social media, but I know I need to be there. Like, how do we make that work? And, you know, I always want to step back and say, okay, let's start with strategy right let's start with who your target customer is everyone with a pulse is not a target right that's and that's a good way to lose money because you're going to have customers that are not profitable in your base so let's mm -hmm. understand who your ideal target customer is i can every small business owner i talk to i can say who are your best customers and then think of 10 people right off the bat right so understand what they look like and then go about attracting more like that as opposed to just anybody um mm -hmm ask those customers to review you, right? Preferably on Google, because that has such an impact on your search engine results. Very few small businesses do a good job of consistently asking for reviews um, on the big sites, which are really Google and Facebook. And then there's others, but Google is usually the place to start. Um, take a quick look at your website. If I can take your website and two of your closest competitors' websites and cover up the logo and I can't tell them apart, then you got a problem right? You're not differentiated. You're not sending a message that solves a problem any different than your competitors. And you probably end up competing on price a whole lot. So just take a quick look. Um, when we talk about content marketing, business owners tend to get a little overwhelmed because they're like, I don't have time to write any of this or any of that. The truth is you've probably already done it, right? You've probably already answered customer questions in your emails five times this morning or in a text message or in a phone call. If you would just sit and think about what do I get asked all of the time? Those are your next round of blog posts, right? Whether you work with me or somebody else, you already know the answers in your head because we all serve, you know, customers every single day and, and kind of know how that works. 
And then if you haven't claimed your listing on Google My Business, especially if you're a local brick and mortar business, you know, you need to pause this podcast and go do that right now. The Google My Business is, is the most powerful tool Google hands you that you can influence that will impact your um, search engine rankings, be that in maps or just in general. And it's where you can respond to reviews, you can post photos, you can um, uh, share promotional offers. And it's really a key component to ranking in local search, um, search engine results. So if you wanna know, you know, chiropractor near me or, you know, restaurant near me, if you want your business to show up in those results, Google my business and reviews are the two biggest things you can, you can control to influence that. And those, this is all stuff you can do, you know, this afternoon. Um, and I'm happy to help. The link at the bottom, fortunemarketinginc.com, there's a big red button in the homepage um, that says get started and get a free checklist. And, and we're happy to help folks work through this. Oh, uh, well, absolutely. And, and I know exactly what you're talking about, the Google business. I, I do that as well for my company. So yes, being informed on that does absolutely help. And for those that just sounds like, whoa, this is a bit much, highly recommend that you contact. <laughs> Well, what we'll do, if you go to that link and click get started, I can review your website in less than two business days and we'll just shoot a video. I mean, there's, it's completely free and I can tell you, look, here's three things you need to think about. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, you know, whether or not you work with us, I'm more than happy to help educate you about how to make things work. That's why I write books and that's why we do things like this. Awesome. So Mark, this is one of my favorite parts of our time. Not the favorite, but one of them. Um, <laughs> so I just want to ask you a question. How does BNI help increase the visibility, credibility, and profitability in Fortune Marketing? Sure. So the visibility, I mean, it, it helps in all three tremendously. BNI has been a key part of growing my business. If, if I go back and look, probably half of the clients that I have active right now came, you know, from BNI, either direct referrals or tier two or tier three type referrals. Um, the visibility is just amazing. It's, I'm always kind of surprised. I actually had a, a member in New Jersey reach out to me last week and we did a virtual one-to-one -one and he's already made a referral to me. I'm probably gonna use him for some um, videography work. And you know, it's just such a vast network, right? I mean, if you really keep your profile up on BNI Connect, as well as just do all the things locally you're supposed to do, your, your awareness just kind of shoots through the roof. The credibility thing is big because we all, even if you're not in a BNI chapter, you've seen that badge, right? You've seen it on our websites. Um, I've been lucky enough to have Dr. Meisner, you know, lend some of his credibility to us in the books that I've written. Um, you guys have been wonderful enough to create this podcast that helps build our credibility as social proof across our chapters. So, you know, it just being a part of that network helps and profitability is easy, right? I mean, I shoot for a minimum 10 times my investment each year in new business that comes into my business. And I blow that away without even thinking about it. So just in terms of the, the referrals that come in, the, um, uh, partners that I use to perform services for my clients. A lot of those are BNI members that we come through. Like I said, I've co-written two books and all of my co-authors have been BNI members. You know, it's really just a layup for a, for a services business like mine to, to be a part of BNI. Mm. Well, yes, you guys are, are definitely living that out having wrote a book with your BNI. <laughs> members. That is absolutely top level right there. And so this is one of the favorite parts of the show is where we get to congratulate you, Mark, for being in the green. Congratulations. Hey. Thanks. Even wore my, my green, green for you today. today. I didn't even know. I didn't think of it. Yeah, <laughs> Paul's got his green on. I probably should have worn a brighter green shirt. But still. <laughs> it's still great. So thank you for being such a, a great member of BNI here in the Arkansas East. And do you want to give a shout out to your chapter? Sure. Yeah. I'm a, a member of the connectors. We meet from seven 30 to nine on Tuesdays via zoom these days. Great chapter. Great folks. Paul used to be a member of that chapter. Um, it's a, it, it's, I, I've been in a couple of BNI chapters and this one's been a great one to be a part of, you know, very welcoming group, even on the zoom thing. That's what we constantly get feedback about is how welcoming and friendly we are. So if you want to grow your business, uh, we got, we definitely have openings. So come check us out. 
Well, look at you, Mark, leading right into that. So if you're interested in joining a great chapter like the Connectors or another one of our wonderful chapters here in this area, all you got to do is just pull out your phone, open that camera app, and just scan this QR code, which will connect you to information to learn more about joining our BNI chapters. So thank you so much for watching another great episode of In the Green with BNI. I'm Felicia Johnson. I'm Paul Kroger. And I'm Mark Fortune. And this was In the Green with BNI. See you next time.